Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today we're going to look at the much anticipated Peppermint OS. We're going to look at the Top 5 Peppermint OS tweaks when you first install Peppermint OS 9 on your operating system. Of course this would apply to uh, any Peppermint OS and most desktops, uh, but there are uh, there's a few things that Peppermint does a little bit differently than some other Linux distros. And so what we are going to do here is we are going to have a look at the five things I would consider the most important when you first install Peppermint onto your computer. What are the five things you might want to know how to do or understand how Peppermint is working? Number one, obviously, run updates. That's going to be any Linux distro. Uh, you install it, you want to run your basic updates. So let's go ahead and have a look at uh, Peppermint and see how it, uh, how it looks right out of the box and how you are going to go about running the updates. So here we are and um, the easiest way to run updates on your Peppermint desktop is if you come over here to the lower corner down here, uh, there is a update button here. It's the shield with the blue exclamation. Now this is running the Linux Mint updater so you can update your packages and if you go into the view menu here you can also update your Linux kernels. Uh, we're not going to do that at this point in time. Now this is the older version of the Mint updater and it's not the most recent one that's in the Mint 19 because that one is still in beta. Uh, however, Peppermint does not give you the option that the Linux Mint installer does. Which one do you want? the the just very very basic or most things or or everything and so it you can see here that uh, there's no major updates but they are all selected so you're going to want to just go ahead and install your updates and uh, once you click that button it's going to ask you for your passwords so we're going to go ahead and enter that and uh, what you're actually the this is one place to do it if uh, there is another place if you come into here and uh, you just hit your update manager from your menu, you can also get to this same exact screen. So that is the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously run your updates. Once it is done, it will finish out just like it just did for us. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to our number two. Number two, Peppermint has a built-in advertisement blocker and firewall but you need to enable both of them. This is particularly important if you're running a computer without a good hard solid firewall. I don't always turn on firewalls on my computers because I sit behind a very well built uh, firewall on my home network, but any of my computers that go outside of my home network, I can't rely, expect reliability on all the other networks, and so what I do is make sure you turn on your firewall. Also, you want to turn on your advertisement blocker because it's going to block a lot of intrusive advertising probably prevent malicious advertising from accessing your computer and it's going to use a lot less internet and it's going to run a lot faster. So let's go ahead and have a look at our desktop and see how you might do that. So from inside of our inside of our panel, uh, you can get to these with the Peppermint settings panel and there are some other places as well. So what you want to do is uh, look down into here and first is the firewall under network. So just go ahead and click on your firewall, enter your uh, password there and under most cases the only thing you have to do down here is you just have to come on and turn this on and save it so once that is on and once you click that it will it will lag for a few seconds so don't cl click it a few times it's not an instant toggle button that automatically goes over all right so now it tells tells us that firewall is enabled most users this is going to be sufficient if you happen to have some instance you know some instance uh, that you might need to allow something through you can click on the add and then hit and allow a reject a limit a deny um, and then you can select which directions things are coming and going in and out of so and there's uh, more tutorials if you need more information on how to adjust the firewall you can find those online uh, but you want to make sure that that is enabled and then you are good and then of course down here I thought it was in here somewhere um, you know what it's actually not in the system settings for the advert blocker so just go back into the menu type in AD you'll see that you have your advert blocker Alright, so here once again we're going to enter our 
uh, administrator password because this is actually going to edit your hosts file. So it does say you want to um, edit your host file. Um, so the advertiser will not be able to connect. There could be some potential issues. Um, so it is telling you that about that. So um, you want to go ahead and continue and then choose which service you want to block. I always just come in here, turn on all of them. This is going to add a lot of stuff into your hosts file that's going to prevent a lot of your more malicious advertising networks to access your system. Number three, review the ICE applications. The ICE applications is one of those things that is fairly unique to Peppermint, although you can install the functionality on other distros as well. Uh, what this does is it takes advantage of the uh, SSB container in a web browser. And uh, what this allows you to do is um, uh, it will allow you to create a, spe a very specific container for a certain website. Uh, best example, if you're using something like FreshBooks or maybe you're using Google Docs or you are using uh, Microsoft Office or any of those other online services that you utilize through your web, uh, through a, a web browser, uh, mail as well, web mail as well, then what you can do is create, create these and create them as menu items. So you can go right into the menu item and access, for example, your email or your FreshBooks or whatever the account happens to be that you are utilizing in an online fashion, it's going to create a web browser that doesn't have the URL bar or the back buttons, forward buttons, all the other stuff. It's just a simple container. And I love this implementation um, that Peppermint has. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. Uh, first, on Peppermint, there are several of these already uh, put into the system. For example, under games, all these games, um, I think most, most of the games at least, I know Entanglement, I think First Person Tetris, and I think at least one of the Solitaires. Yep, these are SSBs, so I think they all are actually. Uh, these are all, if you click on them, it's actually loading up a web browser, and as it loads up the web browser, you'll see that the web browser is a little bit different in that it doesn't have all of your navigation. You can still see that it's a web browser, Firefox in this case, because it's the only web browser that we have. And so here you can go ahead and play this online game, which I've never played, so we're not going to continue. The other things that Peppermint does by default is uh, they will have an SSB for the web client for Skype. So this is not the Skype installed on Linux. This is actually the web, uh, the web version. Uh, the forum and the user's guide, these are both online uh, applications. If you go under your office, you'll see that it has Microsoft Office, etc., and Google, etc. Now, some people in the Linux community may object to these. I personally don't use any of these services, and I'm I'm split on the fence. I would love it if Peppermint had an installation button that says don't install these. However, there is actually a minimal install, which I think doesn't install them. But if you happen to have the full install and these are installed out of the box, um, you can actually remove those. So that's why our um, uh, why this part here is reviewing the ICE application. So you just launch the ICE in the documents here, and this is where you can add or remove them. So if you want to remove any of these, you just kind of come into here and then uh, you can see all of the ICE applications we have. Here's Express, Peppermint Forums, Microsoft Word Online, like, ooh, Microsoft products. ICE. You can just come over here and click Remove on all of these. Uh, you can't select multiples at a time. My apologies for that, but you can just go ahead and remove everything else that you might want to remove. And then all of those items that you removed are all gone now from our Office tab. Well, Gmail's still there. There's Gmail, and let's go ahead and get rid of Skype as well. So that is how you get rid of all of those ICE applications. Now suppose you want to create an ICE application. You just go ahead and give it a name. Um, so maybe we'll just call this one YouTube. And you can actually go to your favorite channel. So go to youtube.com forward slash switched to Linux and then decide where you want this to be inside of your menu. We'll just keep it right there at internet. And then I can either select an icon from my site or I can use this website favicon. Um, oh, the other thing I apologize I didn't mention there is you can select which web browser you're using. Now Firefox is the only one available right now because it's the only one that is installed. 
Now, this makes sense because if you do happen to use Google services, they work better with the Chrome browser. So if you absolutely need those to be working, then you might want to install either Chrome or Chromium and select Chrome or Chromium as your de default browser to load these into. Uh, if Firefox is okay, just go ahead and keep it as it is. Um, and oh, it tells us, oh, my apologies. I actually had already added it. I clicked the button. It does take a few seconds to, to launch those in. So just give it a title, give it the web URL, select the menu, select the icon and the browser, and then it will now appear over here. So now that appears in my internet icon, go ahead and click on that. It's going to load up the browser right to the best YouTube channel in the history of the universe. Well, not really, but um, that's going to load up our, um, uh, our browser. It is taking a little bit, probably because uh, it's blocking some of those ad scripts in there. So here you can see that once again we have our browser without all the other useless stuff. So you can actually load up your own little YouTube thing here and all you'll ever see over here is YouTube. So that's actually a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool function. ICE applications are a great feature of Peppermint, um, but definitely review the ICE applications they gave you, add your own, take the ones off you don't need, and uh, go on from there. Number four, install your applications. Now installing applications could fall under your drivers and your basic applications. Maybe the drivers would have been under the first step, but hey, my apologies, I forgot about them. Um, but uh, there is a nice uh, driver installation tool here uh, that we'll look at that first, and then we'll look at the three options that Peppermint 9 gives you to install software. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the desktop. For your drivers, um, you just come into the menu and type in additional drivers up here. Uh, this was also in the settings. You might have seen it when we were clicking through the settings earlier. What this is going to do is it's going to search for any additional available drivers. See, Linux systems do not generally install non-free or proprietary drivers to your system without your consent. Uh, most of them don't. So Ubuntu came up with this very nifty tool which will scan your system for any other drivers and then tell you are there proprietary or non-free drivers that you can use instead. So you can click on this gut button here and just select would you like to use any of these other items and if you click on yes, hit apply, then it's going to uh, remove the old drivers, add the new drivers and everything Everything is going to work out, out just fine for you. Uh, so that's actually a good function. For your basic software, um, they have added three different software tools. So let's go ahead and load them all up. So we have Synaptic for people that really like to use that type of system. Software Manager is the Linux Mint Software Center. Now this is not the new Linux Mint Software Center which is a lot faster, a lot snappier, a lot better. This is still the old one which came out prior to Linux Mint 18.3. And the last one they give you is just called Software and this is the GNOME Software Center. So if you do like the old functionality of your Synaptic where you can just kind of search for the things that you're looking for over here, you can do various filters, all the different areas that you're you know maybe looking for you can go ahead and uh, and use synaptic a lot of people like synaptic if you want the GUI interfaces you have two options this one here is the old Linux Mint Software Center so you can just come in here click on a category see all the different software involved now this is not the one that necessarily has your snap or your flat hub support to it um, and so you need to be aware of that, but some people still like this and this is the one that the Peppermint team still liked. But because um, for whatever reason they didn't port in the newer version of the Linux Mint Software Center, uh, but they did end up bringing in your GNOME Software Center, which does support snaps and flat packages, I believe, out of the box. I think that's why I, uh, I read why they, they chose to use this. So here you can actually get in here and, and also do in, uh, searches. If you're searching for types of applications, um, the Mint software installer is a lot better to search for things. But if you already know exactly what you're going to install, the GNOME Software Center might have more options for you. So it kind of depends. I know Ubuntu doesn't have all of the applications in the GNOME Software Center. I don't know if Peppermint has resolved that issue or not. So you might, if you're looking for a specific application, you might look in both uh, software managers to see if it, it may or may not be there. I know I found a lot of issues with 1804 where things were not in the software installer. You could still install it. It's in the repos, but for whatever reason, they didn't show up here 
on the GNOME Software Center. I think one of those was Simple Screen Recorder never really showed up here. So it is actually here now, so that's good. So we do have Simple Screen Recorder. And we do have a few different options in this. I'm wondering if, okay, so this is the Snap application version. Um, and then there's these other two ones here. I'm guessing this is the one you have. I'm not sure why we have the second one in there. But this third one here is the Snap application. So this one does have their Snap functionality, so that's why they installed it. So there, that is a, a good way. There's three different ways on Peppermint to install your applications. Uh, so go hunting for those applications that you might need. Before we get into our number five, um, I wanted to say thanks for watching the video. You can help support this channel by checking out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. That is the updated page that always has all the ways you can help support us. You can also pick up a t-shirt or a, uh, I do have some nice stainless steel water bottles here, mouse pads, coffee cups, and other things at shop.switchtolinux.com. And don't forget to swing by the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for watching, and now let's get on into our number five. Enable your desktop icons. This is one of the things that I really wish the Peppermint team might think about fixing is have a good GUI way to enable your desktop icons. Now, understand when I say this, that the, uh, the desktop is already set up to use icons. So if we come over here to our desktop, right click, I can create new folders. Everything does work out of the box right here. Um, and uh, so and everything is working. But what you notice is that your home, your network, your trash, etc., are not uh, on the desktop. They don't have a good GUI way to do this. Um, but it is something that is in the deconf editor. So if you pull up our editor here, um, then what we want to do is go down to org, go down to Nemo, go down to desktop, and this is actually where you can toggle things. So this is your main computer icon. Most Linux distros, you don't use my computer uh, icon quite as much as you'd use it in a Windows system, but you definitely want your home icon on there if you uh, rely on working off the network, uh, off the desktop at all. If you're like me and you have an extensive home network, you probably also want to turn on your network icon there. And then, of course, I love my trash icon there as well. Uh, we also have other options uh, in here as well. You can search up what all the other options are, but that is actually how you can come in here pretty quickly. And this process has changed a little bit. I remember it being quite a bit more complicated than that in the past, but uh, who knows? Maybe that's always, always how it was. But now I can double click and get right in on the desktop quite a bit easier than uh, I could in the past. So we'll go ahead and empty our trash. And now our Peppermint desktop is ready to use. So thanks for coming along with this video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.